He's phony, she's fake. That's the type of people I hate. Hey, 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 Yeah, I know. I'm kind of behind. This is about three months uh, late. But because I did a video on Tariq Nasheed, I thought I'd just do one on Dr. Umar Johnson. So this is my take on what happened between... Well, actually, this is going to be the downfall of Dr. Umar Johnson in my Breaking Bad series. One particular sad moment in this whole um, this whole ordeal is when uh, Dr. Umar's father, uh, I think his name is Mr. Johnson, something, I forgot his first name, I'm sorry, but it'll come up later, he'll, he'll announce it. Um, but he came on and like, you know, was appealing to his son. Now, a lot of people who uh, you know, I was talking to, they were like, oh, you know, he's just trying to get in the spotlight. Nah, man, they didn't, he didn't need to do that or whatever and stuff. But, you know, a man's gonna, a man's gonna like defend his name if he feels like you know his name's being besmirched. He's gonna come up there and do it, and he's trying to appeal to his um his son. It was it's kind of heartfelt or whatever, but it's like damn, Dr. Umar, you kind of like took it to a point where your pops have to come on, and like, come, I'm the father of so and so, you know, I I just wish the best for my son, and I know you've been making a lot of crazy. It was like yo, I. If you grew up with your pops, you know what I'm saying? I know a lot, a lot, a lot of people don't didn't have their fathers in their life. It's unfortunate or to have them in their house growing up. But if anybody has, then you know that's that's like your pops talking to you. You know, as like a teenager, like a lost teenager. Like I, I had my pops say shit like that to me. You know what I'm saying? But not yet, like in your 30s. Like I still call my pops today for advice and shit. You know what I'm saying? But it don't be on a level like that. You know, Dr. Umar is like in his early 40s, yo. I'm in my th mid thirties. Like you don't, like your pop shouldn't be like giving you that when you're 16. Like I'm concerned about you. That's when you know your mental health, you know, is um, it's deteriorated. And people that know you and love you when they when they gotta reach out. When you gotta reach out on Facebook, I mean on um social media is a damn shame, yo. So, you know, when I started seeing this shit, even what was going on with um like you see with Tariq Nasheed and all like that um and the war risk and everything else. Even with the, that, sh I'm, so, I'm sorry, but th that shit had me laughing, but it still was sad as fuck, all right? So I just wanted to make a personal message about that because this is, it's sad. When it came to this point, it was sad, man. I was like, damn, yo, I can't even laugh about Dr. Umar anymore because, you know, no matter if it's a fraud or not, yo, like, have your pops be up here, like, pleading to you. That means something really wrong and shit. And you just felt, like, real, real niggerish to just 
continue, you know, to laugh about it or whatever. Good evening. This is um, Jamal, Dr. Umar Johnson's father, Dr. Umar Alfantunde. I just read his Facebook post um, insinuating that he may be. Like, you see the concern in his eyes. Uh, doing the work that he's done and alleging that I either assisted or find enjoyment in the fact that he's doing so. I've read it maybe not even 20 minutes ago. And I'm doing this video because it just happened. And I really, truly need it to be understood where things are. This is a mark against me as a man, as a father, as a person, as a black man, as someone who wants the best for our kids and everybody <clears throat> black that is struggling out here, who tries every day to do the best he can to help the oppressed, the needy, and those who just fall on bad times. I am not, I am not having any fun in finding out what I just read about what's happening with my son. I have heard in the past, and he's posted, about things that people have been trying to do against him. I have never, ever tried to go against my son. I'm hurt that he would think I would do something like that, but I really believe he knows I would never do something like that. I have many children. I've never gone out of my way to hurt any of my children. My family and I have been posted all over social media. Fake accounts have been made in my name. Disparaging remarks have been made about me and my family. My deceased wife's picture has been thrown all over social media. We didn't ask to be a part of this. You know, whatever he did was on his own. This is true. But we didn't ask to be a part of this. I didn't ask to become Dr. Umar Michael Tude Johnson's father in regards to what he did. See, to me, there's three Dr. Umars. There's Dr. the good doctor, Woke Johnson, who in the beginning was like the clean cut good guy, you know, great talker. Then you have Big Papa and Futunde. This is, this is when he wears the daishikis and the pro Africa stuff and beads and, and stuff. He's usually a little more ruder, ruder as that person. Then you got RBG Uma, the whole type of gangster. You know what I'm saying? This is when he's wearing the Ock fittest and talking crap with the mean mugging hoodies. So we're gonna start with the good Dr. Woke Johnson. This is just Dr. Umar in the beginning when nobody really knew who he was. And you know, he was clean cut, wearing suits, looking good. This is a, um, he was a great orator. He was a positive role model, professional, professional, and also informative. What Let's up, y'all? Check it out. Um, y'all. As you know, I'm doing this little thing on Dr. Umar Johnson. I just thought it was fair because I did certain so shit. Um, I already told y'all I felt about this shit. You know, uh, there hasn't been really any cases of him like defrauding people. If you have given money to Tariq, which he doesn't really ask for, but you just know that. Um, that you can um, you can donate to us, I guess the Melanoid Ministries and shit. I don't know exactly what that does because I'm not too too much of. I don't subscribe to his channel, but if I see yo, I I, I catch his little uh, when he's at home and stuff like that, just to see what people are thinking, what community's thinking and shit. Um, he's for the last like maybe like a few years, I guess. You know, I've been I've been watching him for maybe like two years now, off and on and stuff like that. Never really subscribed to his channel, um, you know, but. He's pretty much, you know, with his hidden colors and then they real successful. So he's kind of going on to being like, hey, I'm just a, a document, uh, documentary, uh, Terrius, I guess, what do you call it, documentary? Yeah, I'm horrible with shit like that, with the words, but whatever. He, he, he's just a documentary, you know, black documentary maker. And um, he put out the 1804 Haiti movie, Hidden Colors 4 came out a long ago. Uh, but he doesn't call himself a black leader. So, you know, I can't really get on him about that. And he doesn't, like, really, uh, he doesn't really try to proclaim himself to be, like, you know, an example or something. And actually, he showed a lot of grace in the kind of beef that he had with Dr. Umar. Because I'm going to play some clips where, yo, he kind of, like, he kind of was like, you know what, yo, I'm just going to let him hang himself. 
Because Umar was talking smack for a while. I ain't gonna lie, yo. Like Umar was talking smack for a while. I ain't had no no dollar in the in the in the bet. I ain't had no um nothing to gain or lose from any one of them winning or whatever. I was on team Umar, I was on team no, Tariq, but you know, like Tariq, yo, he took the high ground because it took him a long time. And after you seen like video after video after video, Dr. Umar like just talking shit about Tariq Nasheed. And you're like, when I was so I was starting to, I was watching more Tariq Nasheed and I didn't see him say nothing about him. Everybody's just like, yo. You know, Dr. Umar talking more smack, and he's like, I'm, yo, Tariq was just like, I'm, I don't want to, like, you know, get into a beef with another man. But then it just came to a point where it was like, either Tariq was looking like a bitch, or it just, you know, it just, you eat you up as a man. You just can't do it. Like, like Umar's father said, you just had to respond. And Tariq, he, you know, he gave him the death blow. He gave him, like, how Nas dropped the ether on Jay-Z, you know what I'm saying? You know? Just like, and he's like, bro, you could have seen what he did to Soto Mayor with the crispy biscuits. I mean, think about it, yo. I'm gonna show you crispy biscuits after this joint, but yo, it, when you can make a, a video game dissing your adversary, and every time Homeboy has to go on a Google Play or 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 the Apple Store to download like Candy Crush or some shit, he see a game about a character, you know, who's made who's in in your image and made to look like a buffoon as a game and it's top selling. That's like I have to like bow my hand down to like uh, to, to fuck it Tariq before that day. I mean, I try to uplift my community, yo. But like he said, he said it too. He's like, yo, I could be very petty, and all of us could be very petty. And even though I, you know, I do the teaching and that third of the beat, I'm above pettiness. All right, I'm not gonna use my platform for pettiness, you know. But <laughs> the whites are above that, yo. And you gotta have some kind of. Uh, comedy. It's a damn shame to see two black men go at it like they did a few months ago, but you know, it was it was damn entertaining and both of them kind of resolved it to a certain point today which is what men usually do and that's a good example of how to have a disagreement you know, maybe and it, and it came to embarrassment and Dr. Umar is, you know, like I hope you get the, hope, the help you get and because everything kind of exposed uh, like the path he was going down and it forced a lot of people to come out and say what they was feeling and what everybody was feeling watching you down this road. You know, it, it was a cry for help. And I think Tariq, like, fucking just, like, he, he put the, the white sauce on the gyro, you know what I'm saying? So, all right, this, but this is this is the, the woman that I remember watching, when, like, when he first, this might be in his first maybe couple of years, three years of doing his little speech circuits and stuff like that. Kind of was on his, like, Malcolm X order game. Great order, great teacher, smart, but at the same time, um, and, he, and this is the time when he was just wearing the daishikis and the African shit, and um, he and or, or he was in his, his shirt and tie, like you see here, or he's in suits and stuff like that. Very clean dress, but I still got the, the you know the, the the beard, you know, to show you that I'm still you know in the movement or whatever, you know, like, and he was yo, he was young. You know, very well spoken and shit, but you know, and very smart. But you could tell that he's, he he kind of had the language of the people, you know, total different than what you see today, you know. And he wasn't fooling himself yet because nobody really knew who he was. All right, this is this is him in his pure heart. All right, and even though I ain't a pan African as R B G, because you know I know who we are, the Amaru, we are the Aboriginal of America, we are copper color, and all shades. In between, from high yellow, copper color to the, the, the dark brown, reddish dark brown, like Dr. Umar is. You know what I'm saying? But we all Indians. We all Redskin. And you're not from Africa. All right? But still, the, the, having self pride, I'm always down with that. And there was a time when I didn't know I was Indian. And I, and I was definitely pro, pro black. Not Pan African, but RBG. And I was down for making sure that our people, African Americans, against everybody else, Unfortunately, that includes Africans too, because they ain't helping us, all right? So let's watch uh, Dr. Umar and his pure essence. Uh, I'll probably skip around a few scenes because this is, a, this is a, well, not really, it's like a minute and a half. Chicken wings for that money, even though they was no good. But you do get something for your money. But when you put your money in the church bucket, what do you get back? Hope in a future after you die. And my position on that, if I have to die to experience heaven, I don't need that religion. Anyone who tells me that I should be content with accepting hell on earth when the white man has his heaven here, 
and the Chinese man has his heaven here, and the Arab and East Indian has his heaven here, and they're even building their heaven in my ghetto, and you're telling me I got to die in order to experience what they are getting right now? That's a religion I don't need, because that's a religion for servitude. And so we have to put the black church to task and ask them, what are you doing without Jesus money? Let me tell you what they're doing with your Jesus money. Every black church in America has their money in a white bank. It is the white banks that are funding the regentrification and the cleansing movement. So all of us go to church. We put $3 million in the church coffers every Sunday. $3 million goes to a white bank every Sunday. And guess what they do on Monday? They take $3 million of black people's white Jesus money and they give loans to white land developers and businesses and entrepreneurs to come into the ghetto where the church is located, buy up all the property, and force grandma out on the street homeless. Now, grandma been going to that church for 30 years. Grandma been giving that church $50 every Sunday. And lo and behold, grandma had to finally face the reality that it was your Jesus money that put your ass on the street. Like, uh, Yo, man, I don't agree with nothing he just said right there. It's not the deepest shit. He knew his audience very well. Um, for somebody who doesn't really, who's not into the conscious community, but might, you know, but love themselves and would stick around to hear somebody say something for a couple of minutes and shit, this is like that deep shit. You know, like people who go to church and shit, like, you know. But, you know, um, you know, I was young. I think I'm when is, when really stuck on the sand, you know, like 30. Oh, like what? Maybe not like 26, maybe like 26, 27. You started like you know noticing uh like my like towards my late 20s, you know like uh maybe like six like five six years ago or whatever. Um, maybe yeah, I started you know, noticing him on YouTube or whatever and shit. And you know like I said, I was a little bit more conscious than that. I said y'all like his, his enthusiasm, his, his things. Then he said he's psychology. He worked with the schools, the boys. And the ADD and all that shit, and just me and my wife was like, "Yo, definitely, yo," because we got boys, and this shit does happen, you know. It does, it does happen. So um, to have like a black psychiatrist in the schools was definitely great. I wasn't on um, my, I was. This is right before I became um, down with the more science level. I was a five percenter, and I still believed very much, and so and us being from Africa. So I was RBG, but I, I wasn't paying Africanness because I know a lot of Africans who don't give a fuck about us. And shit, and make fun of us and all that. So I'm like, I, you know, I don't want to be down with that. If it's if if I'll dis people that we descend from, you know, you gotta understand that at the time of my feeling, I was already on some else against them shit. That yo, know, America blacks are different, you know, and it's because you know. <laughs> but at the same time, I go let y'all talk shit about me just because you supposedly, you know, where I come from or whatever. Because when I look over there, you're know, like Donald Trump said, you know, shit old and he's not lying. Even though I get into Trump while he said that, it had nothing to do with racism or nothing like that. That's why I said, yeah, emotional ass blast. But with Dr. Orange, shit, like we were saying all that shit, I'm, I'm like, yeah, man, he's a pan Africanism. I, I dig what he's saying, stuff like that about the you know, money that you're using and spending, where's it going, you know, who your enemies, what they're doing, you know, and why and they trying to make you uh, out to be crazy, your kids out to be crazy. It makes a lot of fucking sense in the valuations, you know, with the pan African in school. That's the controversy started over because. I, when I started hearing about him owning the money, I was like, damn, I forgot about this dude in the school. I was like, he been asking for that school money for damn near 10 years, like a whole decade. And you telling me that you didn't raise $2 million yet? Because the you know, they still holding it? Nobody bought the, the campus or whatever you was talking about? I was like, definitely he a, a, he a fraud. Because I forgot about one more. Because I, I moved forward, man. I became a Moor. And then I started beefing with the Moors. And then I broke off from there. And I started doing my, yo, my Aboriginal thing. So Dr. Uma wasn't even on my radar no more, yo. My, my, my YouTube wasn't even bringing him up because I was into no Pan-African and shit, you know? Yeah, maybe every once in a while I would see him, but I'd be like, oh, yeah, yo, I do what he's doing. But, yo, th that makes us look bad as a community, you know? Because I'll show you pictures of him with um, celebrities. And I, I, I'm going to try to find videos where, like, some kind of celebrity say that they on a the, on the low-key, dirty low, like, gave him checks for $5,000, bro, and you, you didn't get $2 million to go towards that. But then you sitting here and, and, and you know these Japanese spars and, and, and uh, spas and shit and tricking off money on country strippers, man, which you'll see later. It's crazy, yo. Word. And it, and it's sad because I think when he first started like this right here, 
this guy when nobody knew who he was and he was in crushing cookies and you know he was just a genuine guy who was just trying to do his thing and then Papa, Prince of Pan Africans, this is their third. Yo, so that's why I said there's three Dr. Umar's. There's this Dr. Umar right here, which I call the, um, this is when he was, like I said, Daishikis in his suits. This is clean cut Dr. Umar, right? Like with the straight hat, the straight face, straight lace, whatever, and shit. Then you got um, Dr. Umar with the Daishikis on, right? Like we do speeches like that. Then he's like, um, Dr. Umar from Tande or some shit like that. Then you got Thug Dr. Umar. Like when he's in his like Philadelphia, you know, uh, Philly's hat and, and all the other shit, you know what I'm saying? Like trying to like the RBG gang and we be gangsters of, you know, uh, of Garvey, you know, and we beat up anybody who's not pan Africanness. And if you're not with us, you against us and you just bad as an enemy, you know? And, and it's just like, like I said, somebody who, who, who deals with the mind, psychiatrist, psychologist, whatever you are, it was just kind of sad to see all that shit. Cause I read psychologist books and watch the kaiji videos just just to keep my mind right and to know because I don't trust talking my problems with nobody so I try to fix my shit myself because I'm smart enough just like y'all smart enough because you got to do that research on your own you don't need nobody telling you nothing you know what I'm saying you strong enough to to to, to mind vice whatever the fuck going on and, and, and put it in your brain and you know keep it moving as long as you got your woman or you got your family close by that you can talk to and keep saying with you don't need nobody to tell you anything you know that's, that's the kind of people we are it's the kind of people we are, all right? But, yeah, it was just like, damn, you need to go see a psychiatrist really badly. So I hope, you know, by this time this video's out, which is months and months later after controversy, but I hope by now that you got the help you did, bro. And if you took the people's money, man, I hope you, you get the money back or you built that damn school for those, unfortunately, who still think that they uh, African-American. You know, but I'd rather my people put their people, the their kids in school, ran by uh, this Dr. Umar right here. You know, not not the crazy Dr. Umar, Doug, um, even Effin Tunde when he's serious and that's not an act. You know what I'm saying? Those two together, all right, but you know, not the scammer Dr. Umar. But I'd rather you put them in the school, taught by you know, put black values and 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 a, and a feeling of patriotism and pride to yourself. Then, you know, our, our, our true, 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 true enemies. But I still have to dig deeper before I, like, yo, know, fully would, yo, know, go with that that statement. Because then we have a lot of people, too, who are gatekeepers, who are basically paid by the government to keep us on track with that back to Africa thing and make sure we never question our land. And make sure that what happened in South Africa, which I'm going to do a video on, does not happen here. All right, that's where I The United States is not going to let that happen. Because soon you're going to see Australia go through it. All right, Canada made sure there's not enough black people there to fucking, you know, give a fuck. They, they saying, all the people that's in Nova Scotia and shit, they, they done sent them to Liberia and Sierra Leone. That's where they at. All right, they, they did, you know, and the rest of we ran to the United States that was sold into slavery. You know, so they don't even know they came from them upper lands up there. So they, they, they go good. The United States went the one step farther. Paper genocide. And then, yo, know, everybody thinking they're from Africa. So, yeah, that's what that is, man. So let's let's continue and dig deeper into Breaking Bad, Doctor. Doctor, what happened, Doctor Wilma Johnson, yo? Love it when you call me Big Papa. Info tune there, yo. This is this is the Daishiki. You know, the Kufi win, the, the ball drop, you know, having around the air. This is Dr. Umo when he's like on his his in transition between being the good doctor and being the narcissist, the uh, RBG gangster that he is today, man. Which is kind of sad. There was a lot of hope in this brother. You know, he started going a little bit crazy, getting cocky. Started, you know, talking about himself in the third, in the third person. You know, Papa's coming to town. I'm the Prince of Pan Africanism. I'm the only one that's um, that's putting in the work out here and stuff. 
this, this is him. He went as far as to buy a, look at this, man, a, a freaking uh, Frederick Douglass wig, man. It was kind of, it's, it's freaky and scary and obsessive and really narcissistic, you know? He just don't look the same. It's like crazy. He started blaming people. He became divish. Pause doesn't read it. He's blaming like people in Canada for not like doing their part to make sure that he was, his accommodation was good. And he's taking pictures with stars like David Bannon. You know, I know David Bannon gave you a couple thousand dollars, but you gonna tell me you didn't raise two million dollars making black people look bad? You know what happened? He started messing with these girls. You know, she might have been known to something about that. He hugged up with girls in every other picture and stuff like that, claiming to be celibate. It looks almost innocent, but when you know the true story, it's not. All right, continue with my Breaking Bad theme. Uma Johnson, we going into the Tariq Nasheed and Uma Johnson fight. Now, Uma was talking smack about some of the people that was on his damn, that was on the Hidden Colors. Like he was mad that he wasn't invited back for the third installment. And Tashid said, um, Nasheed said he didn't invite him back because, you know, he was getting a bad rep for not using that money to do well, like being a fraud. He didn't want that on there. Dr. Uma took offense to that, started talking smack, and Tariq gave him many chances, and then this happened. Do you understand nobody is going... Let, let's say, let's just jump to some leaps of logic. Let's jump through some leaps of logic. Let's say he magically has some of the money he stole. Now, all that money has been tricked off. All right? Please understand that. All that money has been tricked off. That money is gone. That money's been tricked the fuck off, man. That money's been tricked off. But let's say in a parallel universe, some money pops up and they go get a little bullshit building somewhere, which will never happen. I'm just giving a hell of a hypothetical. So they get a building somewhere and they try to get the licensing and permits and all this old shit. And people look at this dude's record. Look at all the fraudulent activity and just kind of look at his behavior. His shit is lawsuits waiting to happen. Umar Johnson is a fucking a class action lawsuit waiting to happen. How Jesus is so kind and so just and Jesus is going to protect you. And Jesus is wonderful and heaven is great and you're going to find some glory if you pray hard enough because when Jesus comes, it's going to be popping. When Jesus comes, Jesus is going to bring milk and honey. When Jesus comes, Jesus is going to have a school with um, nuclear warheads. Jesus is going to come. He's going to have a school with laser beams. When Jesus comes, Jesus is going to have a school with nitroglycerin on the roof. You, you see? You see who that sound like? He plays on that. He knows the game. He's like, wait a minute. I talk shit about these preachers, but there's money in that preaching. There's money in that. And I'm not legitimate to really make no money So uh, on a legal level. So I got to go out here and get my preach game on. And that's what Umar does. He's a traveling minister. He's using the same game that those jackleg preachers use. <laughs> you know that fuck nigga does all that yelling and if your single mother used to be in church yeah he yelling girl yes yeah lord Jesus you better preach I'm gonna teach you labor I'm gonna teach you agriculture I'm gonna teach you um, space exploration I'm taking you to the moon yeah who am I gonna take us to the moon from the church I need the money I need this money. And you know when he did that campaign, he put a date on it. I need the money. I have a school that I'm going to get. I need the money. 
charges. And now, at this point, the only people who are really fucking with Umar now, the middle-aged church ladies with them single kids, Papa's coming. Papa, sleep with you. <laughs> I'll be the, a Papa to you and your son. Yes. Umar Johnson was a broke, pudgy, Florida Evan shaped nigga who looked like a fucking walrus. Who was checking for Umar fucking Johnson? Let's talk about the ladies for a minute. <laughs> what chicks was checking for that nigga? He was another dusty nigga with a beard running around Philly talking about, I'm the descendant of Frederick Douglass! All right, nigga. <laughs> that hustle dried up. So now you put a motherfucker on a, a movie screen, then all of a sudden, hey, I saw you in that movie. You were great. So I don't look like a walrus? No, you were great. <laughs> that little hustle dried up. You dig? <laughs> that hustle dried up. So now you put a motherfucker on a, a movie screen, then all of a sudden, hey, I saw you in that movie. You were great. So I don't look like a walrus? No, you were great. <laughs> I'm a sex symbol! <laughs> so this nigga's in a room yelling at himself in the mirror. I'm fat! I'm not fat. I'm voluptuous! I'm not fat. I'm big bone! I'm not fat. I'm gonna go out here and crush these middle-aged cookies. You're not, y'all trying to give me the cookies now? I'm trying to crush your cookies. Crush cookies? The fuck kind of game is that? If it looks like a duck, walks like a duck, <laughs> talks like a duck, it's a fucking duck, man. It is a damn duck. My God. You did. But family... One of the most more embarrassing um, moments, and and um, really, when I think a lot of people, especially if you, you was a hood dude, or whatever, like lost respect for Dr. Umar. And I, I hate to laugh about it, but you know, like grown men do shit for them to themselves and stuff. Was when um when when he had that fake phone call. It was just like, yo, that's like something you do when you're a teenager. So there's this kind of um reverting back to like being a kid in high school kind of thing that's going on with him. Like I'm not a psychiatrist, I, 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 I uh, read a lot of psychiatry books and shit and watch a lot of videos on human behavior. It's funny enough on YouTube, you know, from psychiatrists or psychologists and stuff about why people do certain things they do and certain behavior patterns, you know what I'm saying? So like when you look at Dr. Uma, his pops are talking to him like a 16 year old, right? Who's like out of control and right here, you got him like doing a fake phone call. Yo, I mean, yo, everybody, no matter what race you are, you know, what income bracket your family come from, whatever, where you grew up, yo, know, urban suburbs, whatever, what music you listen to, what, what country you in, we all did the fake phone call to press a, a shorty or to just like maybe scale up somebody or whatever. But like like I said, this homeboy is like 40, 42 years old or whatever, 41, 42 years old. You know what I'm saying? Like, a few years older than me. I'm, I'm old. At 30-something years old, I feel like, you know, and even in my 20s, I wasn't doing a fake phone call. That kind of ends, like, when you when you get, like, when, you, when you leave high school, you know what I'm saying? Like, you might you might get away with one when you, like, senior, like, 18 or something like that. But you you in college, you know what I'm saying? Or you you just grown over 18, and you just, you doing the fake phone call. That's kind of lame, you know what I'm saying? So, we're going to check this video out. It, you know, it's kind of sad and shit, man. Fake phone call, man. Hold on. Let me do this real quick. Let's All they running around is intellectually masturbating old ass information. It's a sad video, man. Like I mean, Papa I do the, Smurf. The fake phone calls. That Papa Smurf shit ain't gonna get us nowhere. That Papa Smurf shit ain't gonna get us nowhere. You feel me? Hold on. Yeah. Nah, I got this. I got this. I so that Papa Smurf thing, 
The fake Ain't goons. Work. You feel me? Hold on. Yeah. Nah, I got this. I got this. I got this. Damn. Hold on. Yeah. Nah, I got this. I got this. This is bad. Damn. Nah, I got this. I got this. I so you, you seen he did the fake phone call. Now this is this is what we accepting right now, man. Come on, man. We can't. So I'm the fucked up dude for checking niggas like this, dude. You got three O W goons. <laughs> G Umar, the whole type gangster. You see, he got the aunt fitted on. 
This one right here tries too hard. He's phony, childish, and self-destructive. This is the Uma that really threw him over the edge, had me scratching my head. Okay, this is when the beef around, um, this is like a, towards the end of the beef between these two, right here, right? Um, after, like, the Christmas and New Year's holidays or whatever, Tariq came out with the the whole type puppet, Herpy, right? Making fun of his, the, the, the SED that, yo, supposedly the, the absent Dr. Umar got. And that's not, and I don't know if it's from the, the conscious strip, but it's probably not, but just from a plethora of, like, probably dirty, whorish, single black moms and stuff that he's been smashing the cookies out of, allegedly, according to Dr. Umar. But, you know, he did catch that XED. He was claiming at the time to be a celibate, which, you know, like, come on, bro. Like, you know, even even the Prince of Pan African is, you, you need some, you know, some pool tank, bro. So, like, you, you had to lie about that, yo. Know? Everybody needs some pool naughty, man. Nobody, that's just natural. Being abstinent as a, as a male, especially as being Indians, you know what I'm saying? Because you Indian too, bro. I don't care how Pan African you think you is, man. Frederick Douglass, he was a, a like a, or even, he was probably Boulay, most likely Boulay. Like early Boulay, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Them educated first brothers. And a lot of them, to make, especially back then, you could judge, you know, how it is and stuff like that, but they, they went with the dominance in society. So you're like kind of, um, it's, it's, it's sad. When you get to where I'm at in, in this state, man, you find out that a lot of stories is fake, you know, or they, they weren't told the way you thought they were. Or you start realizing angles in the stories and stuff. Like, I know something about the, um, and that turn the story that, you know, I'm still working on it because I don't have 100% proof. I'm never going to come in here and give you shit, you know what I'm saying, do it unless I have proof or whatever. Or, you know, unless it's plausible, like super plausible. Because there's a lot of things that I, you know, that I got to break it down to y'all one by one, you know. Because when you get it all at once, like I got some shit like all at once, man, once. And it just like blew my fucking mind. And everybody can take that, and I, you know, but, yo, we, we're not celibate creatures, all right? I think I said in another video that um, us uh, Aboriginals, American Aboriginals, the majority of us, the majority of tribes were polygamous. You know, things were just different back then. It's very European, like, to um, just want to take care of one woman and just have, like, two kids or whatever. Yo, know, most of us had, like, six, seven, eight kids. You know, we had two or three women. And that's why a lot of you have the hard time, you know, uh, keeping your thing laying in your pants because it's natural. What we doing now is going against nature. Now you couldn't have two or three women now because our women are broken, and our men are broken too. We, we're all broken because we're struggling to survive in this uh, this hedonistic uh, Euro um, colonial society. And really, they don't want us reproducing anyway. They can't outright kill us, even though it, it really seems that way with the police. That's one of the ways they do so. You know, we're not going to jail at such high numbers anymore. And a lot of us, more of us are getting more educated and doing the right thing, settling down. So they just have been like trying to declare war on us. But him talking about the whole being, you know, like, that's bullshit. I don't trust any black man. Either you, you're, if you're if you're a black man, I don't care if you, like, you just some dude I know or you in the public figure or whatever, like, you're the public um in their eyes and shit like they say that you're celebrating just i don't trust you bro that means you're really really dirty or you're, you're, you're you, you promote uh heterosexuality which you're probably like homosexual you know or pedophilia or some shit like that you know so you know so when the country stripper shit came out i was just like yeah yeah but this is this is this is <laughs> this is this is over the the whole set puppy uh herbie that i showed y'all earlier shit but <laughs> this, this is the reaction to it so we're gonna, we gonna get to it. Hold on, let me just make my, make my box a little bit smaller. This side. Yeah. Kind of started off weird, it's quiet for like a minute or two. Bring to 
of the struggle that we need. I want to know what a and yo, understand at this time right here, like he was like, yo, he was far into this this new I uh, call him uh Dr. Umar the Hotel Thug, right? He, he was far into Dr. Umar the Hotel Thug, where he's like, you're, you're like, I'm a gangster and I got goons, but we're goons of, of we're goons of uh of Pan Africanism. We the RBG gang, you know what I'm saying? Kind of shit, like, you know, and I'll beat up any coon or yo, we'll take it to any, you know. Any, any Mr. Charlie, you know what I'm saying? We take it to any cracker or whatever, you know, like it was just really on some weird shit, man. Like, I don't know. I don't know, like, if he, he, he just going through different personalities, man. To be somebody who's either a psychiatrist or a psychologist, I, I forget which one he, he's supposed to be, and then his potential's all over the place, you know, so whatever. But to be somebody who works with the mind and to be so far gone is just, you know, it just boggles my fucking mind, yo, on some real shit. But, you know, listen listen to this shit. Because he, he called me bitch, this, that, third. It goes back to the phone call incident and acting like a kid, man. Because, you know, like, grown men that that's, that's still do that shit, you know, it's, 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 it's... First of all, I say it's indicative of still being African-American. Because when you're given a lost title and you're acting like a people that you don't come from and you don't know anything about them... You know, not because you're colonialized, because you know your lineage came from somewhere else. You're not, you know, and you make it up a lineage because that, that the lineage that you making up is not even the lineage of the people that you uh, fucking been told that you are. So it just created a very lost people, and then that's where a lot of this this lost uh, thug shit alongside with being just disc discriminated against and, and just survival. But like it, even Dr. Umar Johnson, as intelligent as he is and shit like that, and as learned as he is. You know, and as great as an orator that he is, he was not above, you know. And I think when you started getting, you know, Punani from them chicks and shit like that, them, them moms, single moms crushing their cookies, man, that he, he got that confidence. And he's like, well, they like a kind of a, a strong man. So I don't want to look like a, a hotel nerd, you know. So now I'm be Dr. Umbo, the hotel thug. And oh, what's wrong with this bitch, this, that, third, that Dr. Smurf? You know, like, damn, bro. Mm -mm. Are his credentials? What are his skills? What are his assets? Because all I know about is pimping women and pimping hidden colors. So what exactly makes him necessary? I need an answer to this. And he's good at demanding stuff from people, which we'll see later. He loves to like demand. This was the worst right here. We got Dr. Wu and the conscious stripper. I mean, this was a scandal that was nasty, man. Dr. Umar, you know, he had even caught a case of herpes, man, messing with some of these girls. Maybe not let this one right here, but he did catch it. You see from these texts, man. At this time, he was saying he was um, celibate. Now, yo, Dr. Wu, you didn't have to lie about that. You could have been saying you was crushing them cookies, man. But trying to portray yourself as one thing and being another is crazy. And then how do you, will you have the money to trick it off on her like that? Pow, pow, just woke up to this young. I'm an ass and die man, so I need those side and back picks. Thank you, baby. Come on, Omar, we know everybody got freaking them. But damn, bruh, how you go from this to like the sleeve ball? Taking advantage of them single mothers, man. Crushing them cookies. All right, now we got a bonus. It's Dr. Strange. Weird shit. Dr. Umar and bathtubs and shit. It's Dr. Umar, the sex symbol, baby. This was another ugly book uh, thing right here. Pause right here, and then we're gonna keep, and then we're gonna go back to it. Uh, when I seen this, it started to get like concerned. I was like, nah, I really, I really can't, you know, uh, I really can't sit here and like I, I gotta stop like like watching it down for it's like a, it was like a train wreck or like a, like a car accident and you drive by and you try you know you gotta keep the eye on the road and keep moving right but you, you just looking and trying to see and creeping by that's what they call like rubber necking bottlenecking rubber rubber necking and you like you know that's why everybody goes slow by accident you trying to see 
you know, you know, either somebody be fucked up, hurt, or even possibly dead. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Job, um, job, y'all. You know, uh, forbid. But man, yo, like this is like a train wreck or like an accident. You going by it and watching it, and you don't want to look in because you don't want it, but you do. It's like I was like, this dude is weird. I don't know if he's trying to be sexy. You know. But it was just really weirdo stuff. And it still goes back to my teenage shit. Like, you're a 40 something year old man, bro. Like, some shit, you know, you're, you're a big guy, you know. It doesn't, you know, chicks like that. There's chicks that like that, you know, there's a certain niche and shit. Yeah, you know, I ain't the most fit dude in the world myself, but, you know. But, like, you don't, like, put yourself out there like that, you know. It's, you just, you should know that social media, the way people act and shit, you should know that, like, uh, somebody, you know, you was gonna get it. It was just weirdo, yo. Like, do you watch your videos before you put them out there? And you know, I don't want to laugh, but like I said, yo, like for him to be such a, a, a serious, had a, such a serious uh, platform, or whatever, and to, to go down to this was kind of sad, man. It, it's, let's just watch the video, man. I'm sorry. I'm gonna try not to laugh. Okay, over here it got a little weird. Again with the bath scene, you know, I already say in my opinion how weird this is. This teenage kind of like looking at me in the bath. You know, it's one thing when you a sex symbol or trying to be a sex symbol or whatever. I don't know if you're trying to be a sex symbol. <laughs> you know, I think you're trying to get them like lonely uh, single moms and single black moms or whatever with the whole POPA moniker. Acronym moniker, a Papa Prince of Pain, Africanism, and then this, this bath thing, yo, and the, and the thug kind of image that them, them women want, the, the male protector joint. So it's like, all right, let's watch this. This one started getting weird, man. Like, he did the first part when he was promoting. A little weird, but wasn't that that bad, right? This one, he's like trying to make sexy faces and all, man. It was just like, damn. Like, you just looking like this, like in the thing, like, like when you see that, something that you know you're not supposed to be watching or like there's an accident or something going on or you know when somebody about to get like like you know it's a world star moment or something like that like I was like dude you lost man see the eyebrows the water is nice and warm When keeping it sexy I mean, goes wrong. All those who ride with Team Pan African and the Parent Association. You feel me? You see this, the, 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 the side China. sexy mean shit? Tomorrow, oh my tomorrow, god. Some sightseeing here in Nagoya, some sightseeing. And then we're going to China, Shanghai, and Beijing. I'm 
It's just a, a lot of trying too hard, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of trying too hard. This is real crazy, yo. Like you, you feel bad and then you don't. Cause it's like a, it's like I said, it's like a train wreck. It's constant out, man. You feel bad, but then you don't. Um, I don't know about the move on, man. Like it, it, it just got like worse and worse and worse, bro. It's worse and worse and worse, man. You still here, then it scare you off because damn, that was hard to watch. This is um another bonus right here. I'm gonna call this Dr. Umar Koo and Mr. Lai. Like, check him on high, baby. Again, Umar pissed me off, you know, that when in like eight years, seven years, you wouldn't get two million dollars. It makes the black population look stupid, like we don't care about each other. And that's how you're tricking them. You be yelling at motherfuckers and shit for not giving you crap. You blame everybody for your own um, problems, including black folks, which you put on here, because remember your race call? You get money from stars. You probably got more than $2 million alone from stars to support you, in public and not in public. So, this is all bullshit. These texts, you know, look, this homeboy said I sent you money and I called the FBI. I would too. That's why I don't send money to nobody. I really think you want the downfall, man. Then you try to talk shit about everybody else too and using the word nigga. That's what kills me, man. Not that I don't use it, but fuck, man. You not supposed to use it. Now look at this. This You can pause this and read it. And you can see what really went on with his case, man. And that's him writing back. And then we find out that you're not even a descendant of Frederick Douglass. What the fuck, dude? Now this was like... Uh, Dr. Omar is like most bizarre, uh, like not most bizarre, but around the most bizarre moments. Like, um, I think if this is the video where, like, when, like after um, Tariq kind of roast them a couple of times and stuff like that. <laughs> you know, and, and, and fuck everything. It, it, this shit was, it was hilarious, yo. Like, it was. Like, he should have done. Like, you should have did your background, homie. Like, He's done that to a lot of people who um, came out of pocket with him. So I think this video where he, like the day after, like the second roasting of um, Umar by, by Tariq Nasheed. And it's like his, um, who would this be? This would be the, the RBG, you know, the RBG gangster Umar, right? <laughs> you see, he got the unk hat. And he got like a daishiki shirt, but he got the hat, and then he probably got the thug pants sagging or some shit from the 90s. But he's just like staring at the camera for like a good <laughs> two or three minutes, so, like a bit or something like that. And I see this, and I was just like, yo. <laughs> like, like, like an old school meme mugging. Like, I ain't seen one of them since like the 90s. <laughs> and, you know, like, it was good entertainment. It's like I almost wish like this shit. Like I, it has to be almost phony. Like if I give my uh my my take my take on it, you know I know I'm, I'm coming out months later, you know, but I didn't have a channel back then and stuff like that. And I'm just going along with you know the observations that I've seen. And this goes to what the conscious community is about. And I'm and I'll be talking a lot more about other people. You know, like you see me talking, showing you about Sonetta and a couple other people soon. You know. You know, being from New York and that, and, and you know, I, I watched a lot of that, that that shit in Harlem, you know, them interviews and shit. You know, I, I grew up seeing that shit happen. So you know, you did this, you know, just like you know, um, the Swiss B song, who's phony, who's fake, you know. That's the people I hate, you know, like on some real. You know, it's one thing when you uh. You consciously trying to uplift your people, and you might be giving out false information, or we're all mixed up. You know, you got the Hebrew Israelites, and you got the RBG, and you got the you got the the Pan Africanists, and you got the just straight Kufi wearing hoteps and stuff. But that's about design, you know what I'm saying? But we know we not from Egypt, even if you think you're from West Africa. 
you came as a slave from Africa, you didn't come from Egypt, they didn't go all the way around the Mediterranean and Egypt and bring you here. And people in Ghana is not, you know, sitting there worshiping the gods of Egypt. It, you know, you should just look at the things that African Americans do, you know? So like wearing the Ankh hat and stuff is just, it is sad. And to the people who did this to us, I swear they gotta be laughing at us. You gotta find out, it's easy to find out what tribe you was from, where are your people from down south? Dr. Umar, I don't know if he, if he is an agent or if he knows, if he knows that we're, we're aboriginals. He doesn't even like fucking like, uh, express any thought to us that idea at all. You know, maybe some people, I think they get so caught up in the, like the, like he's obsessed with Frederick Douglass. Like you'll see like pictures and flyers with him with the Frederick Douglass wig. You know what I'm saying? That's obsessive. So maybe when you're so blinded by the movement that you're in, then maybe that's the reason why a lot of these movements was created because we're very emotional, passionate people. You know, or maybe the brother knows that he's a descendant. You know, well, we, we found out that he's not a descendant of Frederick Douglass. But maybe, you know, there's some truth to him being a descendant of from, uh, one of the, the real African prisoners of war that was sent over here by, you know, the homie back in Africa. <laughs> I can't believe there's a fucking there's a fucking kingdom in Africa called the homie. You know? And what do you call especially New York what do we call our best our, our best friend, right? The homie. <laughs> oh man. Like fact is is stranger than fiction. I mean, yeah. It's fact is stranger than fiction, bro. For real. So let's check out this video and stuff like that. It was just one of them weird ass videos. I'm not gonna play the whole thing, just like I chopped the, the, the sheet video, but yeah, check it out. The way he's in a little girl's bedroom, it's kind of weird. And you change, you change angles and sat down and look. And the old lady coming down. He looks pissed as fuck, bro. Gangster, man. Damn. It's just such a different Dr. Omar than when he first came out. It really is. Yeah, he is narcissist. He kind of has the, like the same uh, message as when uh, when he was like, you know, the good doctor. 
You know what I'm saying? But it's like angry, aggressive. You you see all this stuff. It, it's it's really breaking bad, yo. You really see this man go from like this real great orator who's like humble, but like real unapology pro black and stuff like that. Then it's like talking in the third person and I'm doing this and I'm doing that. So Tariq really hit it on the head by that. And it was like a it showed you like just how far this dude was digging deep, dig, dug his own grave, man. Like he was just going. Like I said, it was sad. Like in the beginning, it was kind of funny and shit like that. But I haven't seen like Dr. Umar in a while, and I was like, wait, man, I, what happened to the suits? And y'all, I expect him to be in a daishiki and shit like that. You pan African, you know, pro, pro, pro African and shit like that. You know, Kufi and all this. But you know, like you don't see him in suits and shit no more. You see him in a daishiki, you know, with a Kufi. And some like dookie ass, um, them dookie ass African ball, Asian ball bead necklaces and shit. Or he be in, you know, like just regular hood attire. Or he try to like mix it together and have like an onk fitted, you know, with the RBG colors. With a, you know, like a Egyptian fucking daishiki looking shit. You know, like, it's just all over the place, bro. You don't know if you want to be a gangster. You don't know if you want to be a... You know, if if you're going to see the Black Panther movie and come in, in your in your full Wakanda fucking brigade, or if you like, you know, you you're doing business and you want to look professional around the white folk and stuff like that, and then you rip it into their ass, but you do it in intelligent, intelligently, intellectual kind of way, like he first did when he came on, and he had the the receipts, he had the facts to go along with everything he was saying. Now, you know, like I said, now that I see him, and that was when, that was years ago when I first started watching him, when, when I was fucking with him, when it came to that shit. But I don't know, maybe, it, you know, Tariq is right, when you're hitting colors, you know, and, and you know, the single moms giving him cookies and shit. The fucked up thing is, you know, he started calling himself Papa Prince of Pan African, is, and he's always in the third person, he's in the center of this, down the third. But he, it's Papa coming, Papa's coming to town. But, like, dude, you got like two kids, two different baby mamas, that's messy as fuck, dog. I could talk on that because I got three kids. They all born in, within wedlock. Still married to the same woman. Oldest kid, 13. Been married, what, 13, 14 years now? Been with her for 17. So I could talk on that. You know, not to brag or nothing like that, but I don't, you know, I'm not going to talk about shit about other people and have a, a messy personal shit going on. Is my marriage perfect? How the fuck not? It's not. Have I made mistakes, you know, pertaining to the marriage? Yeah, of course I have. I'm fucking man. You all, men are always gonna fuck up and make mistakes. You know what I'm saying? But it's like when you get to a certain point, a certain age, you know what I'm saying, that you gotta stop doing the same dumb shit. And it seems like with, with Omar, he was more mature, younger than he is now. All right? And when you start seeing that, when you come out and you like 30, 32 years old, you know what I'm saying? And you know, you, you like this mature young man. Well, even though 32 is not young, young, but it's, it's not old. You know, you, you just you're just getting your first stamp on your yo of, of OG on on your luggage or whatever. You know, you have, you know people say you you um I've been around the block a couple of times. You know what I'm saying? When you get to like 30, 32 years old, you you you've been around the block, all right? And you're, you're making your next lap, all right? And then when you hit like 45, you've been around the rock, you've been around the block a couple of times because you're coming around again, so forth, so hence and so forth. You know what I'm saying? 50, been around the block a few times. You know, at 41, 42, I know he's in the early 40s. Omar's been around the block, and he's coming up on being around the block again. And you you don't turn around and start going back that same path, the other way around, and, and start digging for maybe Umar when, you know, this is how, how he wanted to act when maybe he was a teenager. Maybe he was like a bookworm or whatever. He's obviously a smart dude. But like I said, it's, it's just whatever. I can't really find no really good clips of Umar really saying anything, saying anything, you know, because he's so like in, all over the place. You can check that out. I'm just giving you an overview of the things. I didn't want to just play the Turkey Sheet joint and then, you know, I just want to show you how far it went, you know, but I'm not going to dig through all those Dr. Umar's because he was putting out like three a night, yo, know, and, and crap, and it's hard for me to, and then he didn't, he didn't have anything that's like really comebackish because. Tariq, like you said, you know, like they, they try to go back in the past with him, but you know, like that's kind of fucked up because everybody has a past. 
But you don't. He's he's he, he's matured, just like I matured. And like that one, you kind of show that you haven't matured, bro. You kind of like went backwards. So I'm hoping. Like I don't watch. I'm not into the whole, you know, the Pan African shit, especially people that call themselves leaders and narcissistically call call out people and shit. I'm not into all of that, so I'm not, I ain't checking for you or nothing like that. But I sincerely hope that you you got in the, the professional help that you obviously need. Just from one, you know, and when I say black, I mean black as a culture, you know, because I know I'm 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 Indian. I know I'm American Indian. I know I'm American Aborigine. I know I'm indigenous to this continent. And I I hope you would check that out too. You know what I'm saying? Maybe that would change you, cause like I say all the time, when you when you're running around, African American is a fake fucking it's a fake fucking ethnicity. You know, Chinese people call themselves Chinese Americans. They don't say they're Asian Americans. Indians from India, the Hindus from Hindustan, really, they call themselves Indians, Indian American. They don't call themselves fucking Asian Americans. Africans in Africa, they don't call themselves African American. They're Nigerian American. They Congolese American. You know what I'm saying? So what the fuck is African American? Perfect example is the damn Kwanzaa, which is an FBI ploy anyway. Here we go again. You know, you think your descendants are slaves that came from West Africa, which is Ghana, Benin, the Ivory Coast, the Gold Coast, all of that, right? And you're made a religion based on East African, mainland, uh, midland, East African, uh, and uh, the African horn, like, you know, Ethiopia and Swaziland, fucking uh, Swahili, you know, like religion. That's, you know, that's, that's almost like, you know, fucking Judaism. It's just really fucking weird and bizarre, you know? Anytime that there's some kind of religion that's looking at Africa, that African Americans take on. Whenever there's any kind of like cultural thing, it's always in that East Africa, from Egypt down to the Horn of Africa, kind of on the other side of the continent where you don't even, if you believe in the African American thing, or you found out that you one of your parents comes from one of the slaves that came over here, the, the only less than a quarter million, which is 250,000, only like 200,000 came to the United States out of the like eight to 10 million slaves that was here. So that's a very small number. But even if you did find out you went back there and you, they caught you off the coast of the homie or Wida or you know the, the the slave coast or even motherfucking Negro land, and yeah, you can look up Negro land in Africa. They caught you from Guinea or something like that. Totally different fucking culture and people than what these hoteps, you know, praying to you know Amen Ra and shit in Egypt, which. We still don't know if Egypt is real. Because, you know, there's a lot of evidence that, you know, the Kemet, that's fake. There's a lot of evidence that they might have, them pictures you see over there might have been our relatives here in the States, here in, in America, here in India Superior, here in Amaruka, you know what I'm saying, here in Zion, that they dug up in these mounds that they call now. And they, uh, the Masons built on pyramids and put them shits in there. To make us think that's the whole, that's, that's the whole world. So, family, yo, you know I'm going to stay on top of it. And when I got everything together, I'm going to put a lesson together. So, just stay tuned, man. It's just, it's, 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 it's crazy. And here's, this is just another example of the conquering divide. All right, you just stuck. You just stuck by another one of my um, investigations, man. So like, share, subscribe, you know, and comment, yo. Let me know. And if you have any uh, people you want me to investigate or something like that, or look into or whatever, yo, any ideas, just comment. And let me know. Peace, people.